Washington said. And we are joined this morning by Governor Mark Dayton. And Governor Dayton, I have to tell you, this 2018 legislative session appears to be headed for an epic meltdown. We just heard in your words, you think it's a shambles and maybe the worst end of session you've ever seen. Who's to blame for this? Well, the Republican, and especially the House, have just caved into the big special interest, the money interest. You know, you got a tax bill that gives $200 million to multinational corporations for repatriating their foreign profits that even the Republican Congress voted to tax. They want to leave, leave them $200 million. They're going to give away to them. You got the opioid. Big pharmacy doesn't have to pay anything. You know, and the Senate Republicans, uh, Senator Senator um, Rosen and others, to their great credit, you know, were pushing this. Uh, others in the House, but you know, why why is the pharmaceutical industry more important than the people of Minnesota? Now, Republicans, of course, will flip the script and say that your demand for emergency school funding very late in the session was a political ploy to essentially give you cover to not let them get tax cuts. Uh, I think that's absurd. First of all, look, look at all this, the stuff they've put in th in this last uh, week. It hasn't had a hearing, hasn't had any kind of consideration. I mean, for them to say that I three weeks ago, uh, when I'm responding to a genuine emergency, 59 school districts are facing deficits that are going to cause direct cuts for teachers and curriculum next fall. I mean, that, you know, why wouldn't they just on a bipartisan basis say, yeah? There's a, there's a crisis here, and we're going to all join together and do something about it. Well, what they're saying is that before you vetoed uh, that tax bill, and just a few weeks ago, is when you brought up the emergency school funding. They say you didn't have it in your supplemental budget. It was not in your state of the state address, and it seemed to come out of nowhere. So there's an excuse for not doing what they could do. There's $200 million tax exempt for multinational corporations. And I'm saying let's take $134 million of that and help the schools, help the kids. Uh, you know, I mean, if they want to nitpick about, you know, what time and whatever, I, as I say, they, they violated that uh, promise all the way through. Now, overnight, uh, early in the morning, uh, this morning, the House and Senate passed a massive supplemental budget bill uh, that you avowed to veto, even though it includes money for school safety funding. There is opioid and elder care legislation in there that, again, you're not happy with, but at least it's something. There are many other things, obviously, in the bill. It's 990 pages long. Are you willing to give all that up? Well, they're putting me in a position where, where I have to, to, to prevent some just horrible policy stuff that shouldn't be in that bill at all. You know, they know what they're doing. They're trying to sweeten the bill so they can run around this fall and say, well, Dayton vetoed opioid, Dayton vetoed uh, um, school safety. I mean, I've asked them, I've, you know, implored them to send the school safety as a separate standalone bill. They send me all this other stuff as standalone bills, but they just want to put it in there so they can play politics. This session is, been, is about Republicans' re-election next year. I hate to say it, but it is. And I've never seen anything that blatant. You look at the, you know, the, every moneyed interest that can help them out in the fall is, is getting their way, the, benefit, the detriment of the people of Minnesota. Uh, are they going to be, be, be able to maybe make that case, given the fact it, it appears this legislative session might not have any marquee accomplishments. Well, they're in the process through this session of, of putting together enough money that they can try to convince Minnesotans the sky is green and the grass is blue. I mean, that's the only way I can really make sense of this. I, I hate to say it because Minnesota government should be better than that. But if you look at the big pharmacy, uh, pharmaceutical companies, you look at the big multinational corporations, you look at the nursing home chains, every single time they sold out the people of Minnesota to benefit those interests. Now, if there is no tax bill, uh, that means there will be no tax conformity. Minnesotans will not only pay more in taxes next year, at least many uh, Minnesotans, to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars, just the ability to do your taxes will become a monumental headache. I've talked to a lot of CPAs who say this is not... Uh, you know, the sky is falling. This will actually happen. Are you willing to let that happen? Well, I regret that. It shouldn't happen. It doesn't need to happen if they'd uh, sit down and negotiate a bill. But, you know, it's the tax bill, is, aside from the education part of it, the tax bill is just heavily weighted toward, again, multinational corporations. The rich get more. The middle income, uh, they get three times more by their t uh, 
tax cut proposal than uh, the middle than the wealthiest people, and they get about one third of what they would get under my proposal. I mean, they had opportunities to put this in a way that's really equitable, and they just haven't done it. Are, are there concerns about uh, your legacy at all after the messy end to last year's session that ended up in the Minnesota Supreme Court? The year before that, there was a bonding bill that went down. Earlier in your tenure, there was a, a government shutdown. Any concern about your legacy becoming Governor Gridlock? I, uh, I'm not concerned about my legacy. I'm concerned about what, what I think is best for the people of Minnesota. That's my responsibility. That's my sole focus uh, in this. And my legacy can be left to historians. You vetoed the protest bill uh, that would uh, have tougher penalties for blocking highways, access to airports, public transit. You had signaled at various times maybe a willingness to sign that. Ultimately, you vetoed it. Why? Well, because I said, I've said that I would, would support putting stricter penalties for blocking freeways, interstate highways, and access to airports. But uh, they added transit, and they've got the, the old language, which says if something tends to, well, if you're going to charge someone with a gross misdemeanor, it's got to be something more direct than, than what they've done tends to cause. Uh, and, you know, it's just... If they commit various acts, such as assaulting a police officer in the midst of that demonstration, that's a gross misdemeanor. It should be a felony. I mean, it should be severe. So there are, there are actions that, that, if they take place during the course of a protest, uh, that are illegal, that uh, there are strong penalties, and there should be. You also vetoed millions to reimburse uh, deputy registrars who have literally borne the brunt of the Minlars uh, problem. Uh, many of them say they'll go out of business unless the legislature overrides your veto. Why did you veto that? I support getting the money for the, the deputy registrars, but uh, they also need to include as part of that the money that we need to resolve Minlars. You know, again, the legislature, I believe, some of them, the Republicans and especially the House, want to keep Minlars looking as bad as possible through the election. This is one of these just crass violations of public interest. So, yes, I want the money for the uh, deputy registrars, and I also want the money I proposed to fix Minlars so it's improved for everybody, for everybody not just the... Uh, a special group. And final thing, as we head into this last day of the legislative session, are you willing to walk away with no tax bill, no spending bill, possibly no bondy bill, no opioid legislation, no elder care legislation? Are you willing to weigh, walk away of that? Well, and that's how they're setting it up. You know, I have to veto the budget bill, which has got all sorts of trash in it, things I've told them for months are unacceptable, and then they drop in a watered-down opioid uh, and they drop in a water down uh, elder care, and then uh, maybe even the school safety, so they can run around and say, I veto that. I mean, they've set this up, and, and they've done it uh, with the their re-election in mind, not the best interest of the people in Minnesota. So at this point, it seems like all of those things are headed for vetoes. Well, they got another... 12 hours when they, when they show up today to, to remedy it, but I'm not optimistic. All right, Governor Mark Dayton, with a long day ahead, uh, best of luck to you as you try to work your way through this. Uh, of course, up next, we're going to speak with some legislative leaders. They will join me in studio about what is left to accomplish and whether or not they can reach a compromise with the governor in the waning hours of the session. That is coming.